Thrilled to have you talk to us about worship. What is God doing? I know you guys are all over the country, so you're you're in uh, all sorts of venues with all types of people. But uh, the commonality is everybody wants to worship Jesus Christ. I think today more than ever before. Absolutely, and thank you for having us. Yeah. We're, we're, so we're honored to, to have you. We're honored to have you. Yeah, it's so good to be here. I think what what like what you said there is such a hunger for true worship. Yeah. Just like Jesus said, I'm looking for worshipers who worship in spirit and truth. Yes. You know, and especially after what we've walked through in this past year, mm. this pandemic of, you know, so many church doors closed. Right. And there was this question of if, if the worship isn't facilitated, right. Do I even worship? Right. You know, and then right. we would stream into living rooms, right. but it's like, were you worshiping in your living room or were you just sipping a cup of coffee watching performers? Oh you know? my goodness. And we felt the Lord has asked us to plant a ministry here um, called gather house. And basically what gather house is just the heart of David. Yes. Eventually we'll be 24 <laughs> seven, but more than even being 24 seven, it's the heartbeat of a worshiper who it doesn't matter if I'm here in church or if I'm doing laundry or doing dishes or what I'm, my life is given to a heartbeat of magnifying the Lord, no That's matter it. what. That's it. And we felt so strongly, even in the midst of the pandemic, I felt like the Lord said, you've laid your weapon down because we believe worship is a weapon. Yes, sir. You know, we believe that when we magnify the Lord, when we lift up the Lord, the word of God says that he's enthroned on the praises of his people. Right. Mm. And more than ever in this situation that we're in just globally, we need the king. Yes. We need the yes. king to rule and reign. Yes. And he's lifted up. I mean, he's already there, but he is lifted up on the praises of his people. And so in the middle of the pandemic, the Lord said, open up the doors. And so when all the churches had closed their doors, we opened up our doors and we said, hey, we're going to do this safely, but we are not going to lay down our weapon. That's the same thing I felt in the spirit. Yeah. That's the same yeah. thing I felt. And, and there was such a hunger of folks who... We're like, yes, this is what we this is what we need to be doing right now. We need to be lifting up our song. We need to be using the weapons that we've been given. My, we my. don't fight with fist and sword. That's right. We don't fight with Facebook posts. That's right. We we fight in the spirit realm. Right. You That's know, right. We, we fight against powers and principalities Ooh. of the unseen realm. Say it. And how do we do that? But mm if not in the spirit realm, you that's know, right. and that's what we get to do. That's the authority that we've been. I love that I've been given a weapon yes. and I've been given authority to yes. rule and reign with Christ as co-heirs of the kingdom in worship. Man, and, you're preaching now. <laughs> my God. And, but that's what we are seeing. And that's what we so long to facilitate. Yes. And um, what, what do you want to add? Well, I was going to say too, I think the beautiful thing of it, you know, as humans, we like to be comfortable. Right. And if anything, this pandemic has made us all very uncomfortable. Right. But what that allowed, we opened up our doors in May and were able to have worship and prayer in unity mm -hmm. at a wedding venue, Isn't not in something? a church house. Yeah, yeah. And in a field where I think that because we were already in a place of uncomfort, we were able to go, oh, well, that's not... That's not odd to do it somewhere That's where right. I'm not usually That's right. able to do it. And um, I'm reminded of a time, first of all, I just love the Lord. And because I love the Lord, I love to worship wholeheartedly. Right, like right. He, he is the reason that I'm alive. Right. And so I remember when I was younger, um, I had worship music playing in my kitchen and I started to dance in my kitchen by myself. My and at God. first I was like, well, I don't care. No one's around, but this is me and Jesus right, right now. Right. And recently I've been focusing on the scripture that says, oh, come and magnify the Lord with me. With me. And at first I always thought that, you know, from a, a worship leader's perspective, that meant, you know, okay, we're here together. And as a leader, I'm asking everyone to magnify the Lord with me. Right. But that's not what it's saying. Right. It's every individual person that's right. that is saying to the people around them in their sphere there you go. that either know the Lord or they don't magnify the Lord with me. It's discipleship making. That's right. That's also worship. It's giving glory unto the Lord every single moment of every single day. That's right. That's right. And so I think that we'd gotten into a routine of, okay, well, we worship the Lord through music. Mm -mm. 
because yeah. music and worship yeah. are not, I mean, music is the tool that we use. That's right. Worship is ultimately <laughs> how we glorify the Lord. Worship is our lifestyle. Exactly. Yes. Every, I mean, our finances are worship. Our mm -hmm. job is right. worship. Our employment is worship. Our tasks are worship. Right. <clears throat> our activities are worship. Everything we're involved in. Right. From a leaf to tav mm -hmm. is worship. Praise is what we do. Right. Worship is what we live. Exactly. So oh, yeah. So that's how the Lord has just brought us both into this season of this is what we do daily without abandon. And honestly, that has helped our relationship with the Lord just grow deeper and deeper and more substantial. And then that makes our trust grow. So it's like this tree of worship has all these branches. Right. And when we worship him in spirit and in truth, we're worshiping him, worshiping him with our life mm. and basing our lives on the word of God. Mm. And it's just been such, and I know it's a weird thing to say, but it's been such a beautiful time in our lives. Even though it may be uncomfortable, like the Lord is showing us such beautiful things through yes, worship. Yes, and now yes. we're saying, come magnify the Lord with me. Yes. It doesn't matter what denominational background you came that's from. Right. Magnify that's right. the Lord. That's right. It doesn't matter what, what um, economic status you're at. Come and magnify the Lord with me. Let's exalt his name that's right. together. That's right. I think the pandemic has done some magnificent things for us in that it has obliterated divisions and lines. <clears throat> the focus is no longer on our differences. It's can we unite in praise and worship? Right. Can we magnify God together? Right. I think that's a wonderful thing that uh, elevates the church to the place that God ordered us to live yeah. and where he put us in his trust. Uh, I'm reminded of Psalms 50 when, when the psalmist is telling us there are some things that you do. And, and one of the first approaches is you come to God with thanksgiving. Right. And you you come to God after you make an offering of a sacrifice. You're you're praising God with your sacrifice, yeah. but you it's not any sacrifice. It's the sacrifice of thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Come with the spirit of thanksgiving. That simple adoration. That there's no band. There's no music. There's right. no lights. It's right. me and God. Right. I'm in His presence. He is mine. I think that's what the I think that's what the people of God are are feeling the mighty current and the rush toward the throne of God. There, right. There's a new intimacy that's developing. And I, and I believe this season is separating, if you will, the wheat and the chaff. It, it's separating those people that were simply involved in spectator worship mm -hmm. and, and looking from the bleachers and those people that are hungry to get into uh, get in, get in the grass and, de and determine we're going to be uh, held by God's presence right. and trust him completely. Right. That's, that's a wonderful thing. So you guys are sensing this all over America that everywhere you're going, all the venues that you're worshiping in, people are just gathering to worship. Right. Talk about that. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's national. I believe it's global. We haven't been able yeah. to go global, but yeah. I believe it's something that the spirit is doing a, across the globe. Is, yeah. And like you said, you know, it's, it's difficult to say, uh, you know, you're happy of what happened in the pandemic, but we can certainly see what the Lord is using for good. That's right. And he certainly used this as a shaking yes. and it, and as, as a readjustment yes. almost. Yes. And, and I, and I keep encouraging folks. I'm like, don't go back to the old wineskin. Like no. there, there was a shift and there was a shaking and there's a new thing the Lord's doing on the earth and lean into that, lean into that. Yes. You know, he's asking us to, to worship with all that we have with, with abandon and to fully trust. Talk in about him. that. Let's, let's talk about that dynamic because I believe that there's a, there's a lot of sincere people that are completely focused on waiting on the normal returning, right. waiting on the old to come back, waiting for it to get back to normal. Right. And their focus is, is rearward versus this uh, this adaptation of saying there's a there's a new thing God's doing and I cannot force my old disciplines my old theologies my old forms of worship into this new cavernous vessel that God has created through uh, struggle and adversity yeah. talk about that for just a moment new wine skin new wine yeah uh yeah, I think the the new wineskin is uh, just a spirit of I'm not going to wait to for everything to look the way that 
it should look when I'm comfortable. And oh, then, that's good. you know, that's I good. remember Charity told me one thing as she grew up in church. She, you know, her father was a pastor. And so she grew up in church from day one, yes. basically. Yeah. And I love it because she told me one day she was at church and she looked at her mom and said, Mom, I want to go home. It was during during worship, or you you might need to correct this story because I'm probably telling it wrong. But she and her mom her mom looked down at her and and she said, "The Lord is worthy of worship, and we're going to worship Him right now." That is, you know, and it and it and I love it because it's such the heartbeat of a worshiper. Yeah, yeah. It's, I'm not going to wait till the situation is where I can have a praise break. I'm going to praise before it comes. You know, right. I'm not going to wait till I feel comfortable. I'm not going to wait till the people around me enter in. I'm going to be the one that goes before. I'm going to have the heart of David. I'm going to lead the charge. I'm going to worship no matter what. Right. And I think that's the, that, I mean, there's so much new the Lord yeah. is doing yeah. right now. I, I think he's, he's taking, he's trying to get back to the simple pursuit and so he's taking a lot of the, the things that we've grown accustomed forms, to, our the forms. forms. Yeah. Our forms. And I think we have to be okay <laughs> with that. We have to be okay with certain things that we've kind of come to know as, oh, well, this is church worship. It's yeah. like, I, and I believe this strongly. I believe we almost as a culture got to the place that we created such an environment through production, through just hype that the spirit didn't even need to show up for you to feel something, That's right. That's you know, right. and, and, but it wasn't the spirit of God that That's you were right. feeling. You were feeling something in the room. And I always challenged worship leaders. I said, take your team and go into a room with none of that. Right. Just you and a guitar and a piano and see what happens. That's right. You know, cause that's where it's going to happen. If it's going to happen, that's right. you know, if you know how to lead people into the presence, you can do it with a piano and a guitar. You can do it with just voices. You can do it with Coldplay production if you yeah. want, you know, it doesn't <laughs> matter. But I think that's where the Lord is taking us is, is a, sh is a shaking. Like you were saying yeah. to get, to get rid of all the, all the stuff that is not of him yeah. and say, will you still worship me? Will you still say that I'm worthy? Will Will your heart still ring out a song? That's right. When it doesn't look like where you're comfortable, right. and and none of us are comfortable right now. No, you know, no, 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 none of us are comfortable. But we also need to remember to trust that He is the God that He says He is. Yeah, and He is fully capable. He is fully trustworthy. He is unfailing. And even though we don't know tomorrow, I just keep saying, I don't know what tomorrow holds, but I trust in the one who holds it. That's and right. so I can keep going and I can Ooh. keep pressing forward because I know that whatever he's doing yes. is on purpose. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. And, and I'm surrendered to that. Yes. You yes. know, yes. that is our worship to that is full that, surrender. That, that's the power of worship. I'm sitting here thinking about so many things, but Charity and I are, are from the same family yeah. and um, spiritual family. And yeah. so... I know how she was raised and I was raised in that same mentality. It just, you worship through until yes. we, we called it breaking through, you know, right. we, uh, pressing through whatever. And our, our parents and our grandparents and our great grandparents right. put that in us. And that was, uh, that's considered old timey, you know, now, but, but I think that there's a return to some of those things and, and by forcing us to return to that elemental, craving, passion-driven worship, regardless of what we're going through or how we feel, it's actually a return to our roots, but it's in the process of that return. The velocity of that return is stripping away all of our formalism, right. all of our churchianity, I call it. Yeah. The things that we've fallen in love that we like to think is our church, you know, it's high church. I have people tell me all the time, my God, we had church. What'd you do? Well, we had church. They, mm. they can't right. define it, but right. what they're telling me is we had church that I enjoyed. Mm. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. And I remember the old days, and, and when I was young, I, it, it was never a question about what you enjoyed. It was about what God was doing. Yeah. Exactly. Right. And I think that that's kind of the simplicity of returning back. And we, we have wonderful things, but in saying all of that, I think one of my concerns is there are so many people that feel like they don't understand. So they feel like that if they give themselves liberty to worship now, it's almost like they're being disloyal to their past. Mm -hmm. and or giving that's, up on the way that it could be. That's right. Like, that we're, we're, we're releasing ourselves from our hopes of a, of a return to, to, to yesterday. Yeah. And, and I'm being disloyal to, to my dreams of what should be. 
And, and I'm, I'm saying it's completely different. It's not that at all. It's yeah. God leading us into a new wineskin. He, we, we elevate our heritage. We celebrate what God has done. Right. Mm-hmm. But we look at that as a transom to see what God is saying he will do. Right. And so right. talk, talk, you guys talk to us about, I love this kind of conversation <laughs> because I think, I think that this, it's, it's in this worship. You know, we talked a little bit about uh, Moses' tabernacle. You touched yeah. on David's worship. Yeah. David's, David's tabernacle, if you will, was completely different from Moses' tabernacle. Yeah. In fact, God gave him a license to do something he didn't order at Sinai. Right. Right. So uh, if you go through Leviticus and Deuteronomy and some of those, uh, some of those tremendous books of, of Torah that speak of the law and the ceremony and the ritual and the custom of worship <laughs> yeah. and the expectations of those commands to worship. You get over to David, he has nothing but a tent. Right. You're like, right? <laughs> yeah, what, what's going on? He has the right. ark of God. He has yep. the presence of God. He says <laughs> the ark ought to have at least a tent that covers it from the, from the sun, uh-huh. and I'm going to make its veil worship. And he put up an army of worshipers 24-7. Mm-hmm. And that's yep. what you're saying God's calling you into. Yep. Talk a little bit about that vision. Yeah, Um so we, ju- we, we certainly believe that the Lord is asking, not for everyone, but definitely um, illuminating a need for the Davidic to rise again. This atmosphere of 24-7 prayer and worship. What I love is when you look at when David established the Davidic order of worship, yes. it totally changed the entire culture. Everything. And what I love too is the 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 tent became actually the governmental center. There you go. And so it says the government rests on the shoulders of the Lord. And, and we see that right. in David's tent. Right. Because David, who was a king, That's right. would go <clears throat> and get wisdom and discernment from the spirit. That's where his governmental center was right. because he would go get instructions from the Lord and then bring that back down into the city That's and right. rule and reign from that That's place. Right. But right. David always remembered that he was subject to the actual king. Right. That's right. That's you know, right. and we are called as sons and daughters of God to rule and reign with him as priests and kings, kings. of That's a holy right. nation, That's right. correct? That's right. And so what I love about a priest and kingship is that we are given authority as kings, but we also have the access of priests oh, into the presence God. of God. Talk about that. And 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 we have to be. I love we come from the line of Christ who comes from the line of Melchizedek, right? That's right. Who was a priest and a king. He That's functioned right. as both. That's right. And Jesus came <laughs> as the high priest and the king of all kings. That's right. And we are now in that same lineage. That's right. And we are called to be both. That's right. To rule and reign with Christ, not in our own strength, right. not with well, human right. diligence and ideas, but from the wells of wisdom that are say are open the minute we ask for it. We ask for wisdom and the the wells of wisdom are open to go. us. That's right. And so that's how we rule as kings. <clears throat> you know, that's when and I say this all the time. I'm like when you post on Facebook, when you talk about what's happening in the earth, make sure that you're talking about it from an authority and a place as a priest and a king Thank you. of a holy nation. Thank you. You know, Thank don't you. go out there and post fear-mongering articles and things like that. That's not what the Lord would have. Thank you know, you. make sure that what you say is holy, it's blameless, it's of the Lord. That's right. And it's what he wants to really, That's I right. can't tell you how many, I mean, I struggle with it, obviously, because I still struggle <laughs> with it, but I'll type out a whole thing on Facebook and then I'll, I'll almost hit the send button and I'll say, Lord, Come is back. this what you actually want to say? And I would say 95% of the Delete. time he's like, this is not what I want to say. This is what you want to yeah. say. You know, and yeah. I'm like, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. I'm supposed to rule and reign as a priest of a holy nation. I'm not going to say things that, that right. cause division and things like well, that. Well, things but. that we fill out of, <clears throat> we, fit, we live in two different dominions and worlds, if you will. Our, our flesh and our logic and our reason says something <laughs> is, is perfectly logical. Right. But when, when the, um, the invasion of his mind in our mind overwhelms our logic and our reason. It almost appears as if all of our brilliance becomes ineptitude uh, and his brilliance shines through us. Yeah, and, and he allows 
uh, his illuminated word to penetrate us and use our frailty and what we could have made a mess in to become a message for him. Yeah. So I, I, that's good. What were you going to say? You had something. I, I was just going to say, I love how you said that David was still in a place of subject to the Lord. And that's the major difference between David and Saul. That's it. Saul was his own authority and mm -hmm. David was subject to the authority of God. Mm -hmm. And so when we're seeking after the heart of David, I think one really important mm -hmm. thing to remember is that he had a heart of repentance. Yes. And we need to be in a season of repentance. It's that looking into the new wineskin. How Jesus. are we going to how are we going to enter into what God has for us in this season if we're not willing to let go Right. of our own comfort. Yes. And so I think of the humility yeah. that Jesus walked on this earth with. Yes. And if we're going to be so bold as to post our own mm -hmm. identities and opinions yes. Yes. on Facebook instead of going, Lord, I'm going to just give this in your hands. Right. Why Jesus. put it in the hands of the internet when you can give it to the Lord? <laughs> and my, so my, I my. think that's also a part of the heart of David is to look and say, yes, I know I've got something to say and I feel like I should say it, but let the Lord speak it through you. Let him give you the right access to the right, right. people in the right moment right. because right. The, Facebook is not the answer. No. I'm sorry. It's just not. No. No. Um, but having said that, I also feel like that's an uncomfortable thing for us to do yeah. is to repent and to be <laughs> humble. But I think about all the times in the New Testament that people were brought into a place of uncomfort mm -hmm. that a miracle happened. Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, we don't want to dip seven times in a dirty, nasty river to get rid of our leprosy. That's we don't right. want to do that. But look at the miracle on that's the right. other yeah. side. That's right. And I also think too, and I don't mean to say like, Uncomfort is not the same thing as confusion. No. God is not the author of confusion, <laughs> but He does bring us into a season of uncomfort to grow us. To humility. Yes. Yeah. yeah. To humility and yeah. to humble ourselves. Yeah. So, yeah, obviously it's countercultural to go, I'm not going to post that. Yeah. I'm not going to retweet that. Yeah. Um, but in order for us to completely submit our lives to the Lord, Post Bible verses, post things Absolutely. that are going to glorify and edify Absolutely. the Lord. Absolutely. That is living a worshipful that's life. Right. That's, that's part right. of it. And that's part of having the heart of David. So I just <laughs> wanted to expound on that. Yeah. Like being submissive to the Lord is also bringing yourself to a place of humility and repentance. Oh, and I think course. one of the challenges that we have in our culture is uh, you, you touched on so many brilliant points, but two things stand out to me. We have, we have this culture that has compartmentalized everything in life. And uh, you can do that when you when you live in a, rel a relative world of truth. So everything is relative. Mm -hmm. So everything is excusable. Huh. So my uh, my Monday man doesn't have to submit to my Sunday worship. Uh, you know. Right. That's so good. that's that's the challenge that we have. And then the other thing that stands out to me that is contrary to and diametrically opposed to this kingship and anointing of David is the world that we now live in. And that's what Facebook has provided is people are submitting their thoughts for their peers' approval. Yeah. And so it's peer-to-peer -peer relationship versus standing under the government wow. and the covering of God. If we if we ask him what we should be posting and saying first, right. it's not going to please or be uh, uh, perhaps win the approval of our peers sure. because I've never met anyone that's been raised with me in my age that has any more brilliance than I do. <laughs> if I want to know something, I have to talk to my fathers right. who have lived before me right. mm -hmm. and had the experience of the travel that I have not had. Yep. And kids are, are, are communing and conversing and counseling with kids. You yeah. know what I mean? I said that Sunday, I said, you know, some of the greatest people that have the greatest wealth of knowledge about raising children are people that are single and have never had a child. Uh, right. You know, they're experts. <laughs> yeah, right, right. They're, they're, they're right. theoretical experts. Yep. They're certified mm -hmm. with a degree from a thesis, but they've never had the experience. And David is that one that is completely, he, you know, you're, you're talking about David being the, 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 the priest and the king. He was a poet, prophet, priest, and king, according to the word. The, day, the Bible says the scepter never would leave his house. Mm -hmm. And this is a man, after all of his failings and after all of his trouble, right. but his submission to God and his willing to crawl in humility before the throne and, and never stop worshiping. Yeah. Right. The ultimate confidence was in the God that I worship. Yeah. And it brought him through. It brought him through and it established him. 
And I think that's the revival that we're coming back to. I don't believe that we're coming into a season, and I talk to some of the greatest preachers in the country all the time, but none of us believe we're coming into a revival that's going to be centered around a personality or a, a superior tongue or, uh, you know, inflamed oratory or some, uh, we're, we're not going to have a Billy Graham crusade. We're going to have a multitude of pure worship mm -hmm. and the glory is going to rise and the supernatural is going to be manifested and things in the earth are going to be changed. And I believe you guys are leading that. I believe you're in the front of that. Well, on January 1st, I, I, <clears throat> preached a, I preached a sermon just about what I felt like the Lord was doing. And when I sat down to write it, I, I said, Lord, what, what do you want to say? And I felt like he, he said, I want you to tell my people I'm doing a new thing on the earth and that there is a revival coming, my but it's God. not going to look like Billy Graham stadium revival. That's right. It's not going to be a revival scene in stadiums and arenas. It's going to start in the quiet place. It's going to start in the heart of his people. And certainly it will get to the place where the multitudes right. come together to right. worship. Right. But we live in a culture of celebrityism, of spotlights, of Everything is seen. Everything is known. Mm -hmm. And I just think it's so like the Lord in a culture that just everything is inflated and it's public right. that he's going to start this in the quiet place, mm -hmm. in the secret place, mm -hmm. in the hearts of his people. It's, yeah. It is a return to humility. Yeah. And I don't believe we will see the revival that we long to see until the revival of the heart happens. Oh, my. And yes. the Lord illuminated to me i mean gather house we are our 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 heartbeat promise is what we see in scripture where he says if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray turn from their wicked ways then i will hear from heaven yes and i will forgive their sins and i will hear their land the lord while i was talking to him the other day he said i put the word then in there on purpose <laughs> yeah it's an equation <clears throat> right it's not a oh this is all happening simultaneously right if my people will humble themselves and pray yes. and turn, yes. then, then I will hear from heaven. It's a heaven. continuum. Yes. Yeah. And I just felt so strong like he was saying, this is the focus, repentance, turning from wicked ways, submission, humility. That is what is required before I can do this. And isn't that the same pattern that he has used throughout the history throughout of mankind? History. You know, uh, it, the repentance. <clears throat> Repentance is first. Right. Submission, baptism, right. getting completely submerged into him mm -hmm. by, by the garments of humility. And then he pours out his spirit or he changes our steps or he right. orders us into your, it's. I think uh, there's a group of us that, that do a lot of talking together and I collab with, uh, and we, we use this uh, scenario, the lower room and the upper room. You know, the, the logic and reason and uh, compartmentalization and secularism and division and all of that happens, uh, promotion, high, you know, uh, personality, all of that happens in the lower room of our life. Huh. But when you get into the upper room, that's wow. where that one heart, one mind, intimacy, supernatural uh, development takes place. Yeah. And that's exactly what happened on the day of Pentecost. Right. Yeah. You know, you're saying it in a very... Um, uh, it's a beautiful way of, of, of typifying David was a foreshadowing of Pentecost. Yeah. And these men were commissioned to go up and wait and tarry in the solitude of anonymity. Yep. And they weren't to come out yeah. until they met him yep. and they were filled with his presence. Right. And then they were known. Yeah. <laughs> right. And I think that's what we're coming back to. Yeah. Don't well, you? It's, it's walking with his presence in every moment of every day, not just on a Sunday that's right. morning. That's right. It's, I love what you said. It's your Sunday versus your Monday. That's right. But our Mondays are just like our Sundays. That's right. So that's how we need to approach it. What's that's right. beautiful too is, and we exist in a new law, but I love that Jesus came to fulfill the law, not abolish it. Because right. the systems of the Old Testament are beautiful and they mirror and shadow to the new thing. But I love in Moses' tabernacle, the ascension offerings, which yes. were given at the morning and, and night time. Talk about it. It was so, I love, I love it so much because mm -hmm. they're 
six, seven steps, depending on if you count the benediction as the seventh step. But the first five are all about cleansing and uh, atonement, which I love the word atonement because it means at one meant, you know, it's to get to a place of communion, of oneness, you know. But I, I think it's so important that they started and ended each day with a sacrificial offering and it was the whole animal. Yes. Other sacrifices were parts of the animal, you know, this was the whole animal. Yes. And they would press their hands up against the head of the animal to yes. to say I align with you. This is me. I'm yes. giving my I, this is this is a, a symbolic of my whole self. That's right. being sacrificed on the altar. But what I love even more than that is that once you get to step six, it doesn't just stop at cleansing. It doesn't just stop at the repentance and the atonement. That's right. It goes to communion with the Lord. It goes to blessing Mm -hmm. from the Lord. Mm -hmm. And I just feel so strongly that to get to that point, it requires that daily surrender. Yes, we're under a new law, under a new covenant because of the blood of Christ. But the reminder to every morning and every night to submit, not just a little bit, but to submit our whole selves, whole selves. on the altar, you know, to give ourselves completely to the Lord. Right. And when we do that, that sacrifice becomes that pleasing aroma that ascends That's to the right. hill of the Lord. Oh. And then we can be in communion with, with God all the time. That's but awesome. it starts with that humble surrender and submission and offering up That's awesome. of our life. And I think that is how we live a lifestyle of worship. That's how David lived a lifestyle. He was 100% surrendered to the Lord, submitted to the Lord all the time. And I believe that's why he was able to remain in fellowship and communion with God at all times. Oh my God, that's so beautiful. That's exactly right. I mean, that's that's revelation speaking right there. You know, that, that so many people are not aware that the Old Testament is our schoolmaster. It was never abolished and, and uh, deported, right. yeah. you know, it, we, we learn from it. it yes. It's the, re- everything in the Old Testament that was concealed was revealed in Jesus Christ. Right. So um, the wealth and the richness and the tapestry of grace that's woven through those Certainly. Old Testament offerings, you, you just walk that, that linear line of grace, but the, the rejoicing that took place at the end of that sacrifice was because of the whole sacrifice. Right. right. Could never have been done in partiality. No. And so uh, let's let's talk for a few moments about what you guys are feeling for this weekend. We're going to be excited to have you guys. I know you've been with some friends of mine and uh, God's moving in, in their churches as well. But I want to know uh, what do you what do you expect? What what do you see um, for the church in America in our in our near future, how how are our worship venues going to change? How uh, are we going to do set lists differently? Are we going to do uh, what? How does that work? How, do, how what do you think happens? I mean, in my in my reference, I'm old school, mm-hmm. and we used to use words that I won't use now. But we used to we used to wait on the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we used to we used to have time, and we we knew nothing about growing up. We knew nothing about a 55 minute encounter. Yeah. Well, we didn't even know that was possible. <laughs> our, our, our encounters lasted all day Sunday. Yeah. The Lord is the long move. As, lo- as long as the Lord moved, yeah. we were there. So, right. uh, so talk to me about this desperation, this hunger, this, this, uh, this, this, this overwhelming sense that I have to be in the presence of God. I don't care what it takes to get there. Right. Um, how does that juxtapose against this new, this old system that we've come out of? Of we had to have mechanical thoughts, and we had to have mechanical worship, and we had to get out in time because we had another service, and it was it's very much a, an assembly line process versus that one-on-one encounter. Talk to me about that for a little bit. I know we've been talking about it around the edges, but how do you see worship services changing in America in the next few months? Well, I think you know in Acts two it talks about them going from house to house Mm -hmm. in breaking in bread and in prayers. And we've had multiple house worship Mm -hmm. experiences. And what I love about being in the living room with just a few others, sometimes a lot of people, 
um, there seems to be a freedom of pressure. Mm. You don't have pressure right. to fulfill a particular timeline or sing a particular song. Um, it feels just very freeing and you're able to communicate with the Lord on your own, but you're also with a group of people. And I, I have a feeling that we're going to bring that house to house worship to the houses of God. That's right. And so it's going to feel like there's no pressure. That's right. There's no time frame. And yes, people's time is important. Don't get me wrong. Right. What I mean by that is it's not going to be like a um, mechanical, like you right, said, right, experience. Right. Yeah. What, what it's going to be is that waiting on the Lord, that precious thing that maybe we've walked away from a little bit and God's just trying to call us back to it. Yes. Um, and we have, we have the um, opportunity to meet with God, not only in song, but also in the quiet. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, mm -hmm. yes. And, you know, for me growing up, um, quiet was not a good thing. Right. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Dead I, space. Dead <laughs> space. Like, but I, I in, in the last few years, I have been able to walk into different worship experiences and meet God in every single one of them. And so I feel like the familiar is going to just become expounded. Mm -hmm. That's right. God is not linear. No. And I remember thinking, oh, I'm going to meet God in a place that I've always met him before. Right. But he works in a very spherical way. And, yeah. and, and where I always saw him on one side, I feel like he's showing us the other side yes, of him. Yes, so yes. if you're used to worship being very still and quiet, I think God's going to give you a praise break. I, I do too. And I feel like if you're used to the clapping after yeah. every song and you're used to, that is your praise, that is your worship, he's going to show you another side of himself right. that says, be still and listen. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think that this generation of worshipers is going to see him from all sides yeah. because we're allowing ourselves to be humbled yeah. and say, okay, God, what do you want to show me yeah. today? How do you want to show me yourself today? Well, I, I hope you guys uh, feel what, what we've tried to, to build here uh, over the years. And, and, and that's very much been what sustained us and has helped us and uh, kept us through all of this pandemic season. But we, we very much are a people that are free of the press and the pressure that's of performance. Great. We we despise performance yeah. because it's the enemy of intimacy. Right. Uh, and um, so good. we we want you guys to to come in here and enjoy it. And we don't have uh, a 16, 21, 16 minute, 21 second yeah. worship set. Yeah. And then we have to do something else. We're, we're free to worship as long as we want to. And I think Praise that God. I think that's going to be the weapon. Mm -hmm. that's going to attack this constricted life that we've been formed in from this pandemic. This, mm -hmm. this feeling that everything has to be measured and controlled mm -hmm. is going to be, com uh, it's going to be combated. It's going to be broken down by the free, the freedom and the free form of worship. Yeah. And so I just, I want you guys to know that we're excited. Our team is excited. Our, our musicians are are ready and they will worship with you if you want to worship 10 minutes or 10 hours. And I'm, <laughs> we'll let the Lord may, do his thing. They may, have to, they may have to take a water break after four or five, but, but, uh, they, they love the Lord. And, and I think that's what, you know, Sunday Christine was leading a song and it was a new song and, and, uh, the words were so provocative and it was so, it was so pure. And people, I was, I was just watching people were, were, weeping and crying and, and and that's that's what I think God is looking for right. but I believe it's not it's not just a, a place that we arrive to I think it's the weapon that he's going to use to break this this uh, you know the, the the New Testament Paul was speaking about uh, this particular spirit that came and it came as a, a viper and it came as a, a boa constrictor uh, a python is the name of that. And so <clears throat> the, the, that spirit wraps itself around you and it starts squeezing every time. And every time you breathe, it constricts more. And I think part of this pandemic has done that to, mm -hmm. uh, to our worship and to our form of, of freedom and liberty and living and just being a carefree with our actions and our words. So there's been such a constriction and a tightness I think when we start worshiping Sunday, people are going to be set free in this building. I believe it. And we want to worship 
We don't care about programs, agendas, yes. lists. We want you guys to be free, follow the, follow the spirit. And I don't care if the song's on the list or not. If you right. feel like going, go, you know, and we want to worship. We want all of Houston to be with us and worship with us. Yes. And, um, and we're looking forward to what God does out of this. I would love for you guys to fill this place up more than once, you know, and, and, and take the freedom to, to use everything we have to, to facilitate that kind of move. So we're excited. You have any instructions for us, anything we need to do? I think you said very strongly that we should be in a mind of repentance yeah. and asking God to, to cleanse us and thoroughly wash us and prepare our hearts for this worship encounter. Anything else? Well, I think it's beautiful that a, a song or music is actually being used as the tool it's supposed to be for worship. Yeah. Um, Ryan talks about the Hallmark card, right? Uh -oh. Like a Hallmark card that you give to someone doesn't really mean anything unless you put something in it that you've written yourself. Mm -hmm. There you go. And so when we're singing songs that maybe someone else has written, did I say that right? Yeah. The Hallmark yeah. card thing. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I use it as a, as a, as an illustration of. I love that we put lyrics up on the screen, right? But until you actually engage your whole heart sure. in it, you're just basically going to the Hallmark store, buying a card, and reading that card. What some rehearsing man somebody else's in, work. yeah, what right. some man in California in, yeah. in an office put together, you know. But when you open up your mouth, yeah, and you start actually giving the Lord glory and worship with your mouth mm -hmm. and your words, yes, right, something shifts because yes. it's like. It wouldn't mean much if I just gave her a blank Hallmark card. She'd be like, well, that's cute, but you didn't think of that yourself. That's right. But the minute that I add my own words to it, suddenly it becomes an intimate card that I would only give to her. That's know? right. Oh. And that's what our worship should be. And so I'm a huge fan of lyrics on the screen and songs that we all know. That's that's how we congregationally come together. But she was even talking about space, and I love space. We mm. need to facilitate space mm. for people to be able to interject their own worship into the moment you know and yeah. so what does that look like to you guys what is that what it, in this new era i'm going to call it an era yeah in this new season that we're stepping into it we're we're all travelers into an experience that we only know historically from scripture uh and and it was quite different because it was confined in a different time and culture but what does this new space look like to you guys what is that uh, when I when I'm I'm talking specifically about worship and you're you're using the uh, the term space for the person in the audience or sitting at home and they're thinking what does that mean yeah. what what do you mean by that just creating time yeah well you know the scripture says the Lord inhabits the praises of His people not just His worship teams and so His people <laughs> <That's good. laughs> oh I love that so His people have you need to, to say. tweet that. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I just feel so strongly that his people have to sing. And right. so as worship leaders, our job is not to perform for people. It's to facilitate mm. an offering of the people to the king. And so it's uncomfortable sometimes. I yeah. mean, even when yeah. we first started Gather House, yeah. we would go into these times where the presence of God was there and we just felt like the Lord said, be still in yeah. my presence. Yeah. Like, let me talk. Yeah. Let me have a chance to say something. I think this wouldn't be a relationship if I only talked to her all the time. Right. And every time we went out on a date or something, I'd be like, blah, 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 blah. So it requires this back and forth. And we have a living God who speaks to us. Right. And so, I mean, mechanically speaking, it means just being comfortable right. with the space. And that's uncomfortable sometimes. That's right. But we have to be okay with that. That's right. In order to facilitate a conversation. A That's conversation. Right. Well, you know, you're, the, the illustration that you just used is so apropos for where we were, you know, and, and as soon as this hit, um, back in March of 2020, I instantly discerned this was not going to be a short-term two-week deal, that this was a spiritual thing. It had nothing to do with the fabrications of men. This was a, this was a spiritual attack. And so I talked to our team, and we pivoted in, almost instantly. And we reconstructed this building so that we would move our worshipers and our speaking on the floor. And we would surround this, this arena 
amazing. Like the children of Israel right. worshiping in the tabernacle yeah. because you're, you're, the distance you have from your intimacy, mm. from the point of your worship, is the, is the distance required for you to, uh, in an old term, backslide and, mm. and become spectator, okay. not a participator. Mm. And so, you know, with the, with the pews 110 feet away from the pulpit, you know, it was it was very easy to see that the the kind of disengagement that's going to take place can never be recovered mm -hmm. because the distance is too great. Yeah. Now we've created this atmosphere where we're not worshiping at people and we're not leading them mm -hmm. from a stage a long way away from mm -hmm. them, but we're all worshiping together. Mm -hmm. And that's what you're talking about. Yeah. Every seat in this building is to be occupied by a worshiper, Amen. not a spectator. Right. right. And that's, I think that's the challenge for us. I think that's, it's going to be the adventure for us. And I'm excited about it. I can't wait for it. I want all of you to come and see Ryan and Charity and let them know how much you love what God's doing with them across America and throughout the world. And uh, we have an opportunity this weekend to break this uh, brass ceiling, if you will, over this state, over this city, mm -hmm. over the darkness that has held so many people uh, in the confines and in the shackles of its of its despair. We have the power yes. to change as the priests and the kings of God. We have right. the power to invade the heavens with our worship yes. from the marketplace, from the ministry, ministry place. Wherever you may be in life, whatever God has called you into, you're first a worshiper. I tell people all the time, before I was ever a preacher, I was first a worshiper. Right. Amen. And so you you must recover that that sound, that tenor of worship. And we're inviting you into an upper room experience. And when I say that, I'm talking about elevating your your place of worship, not from your mind, not from your logic or your reason, but move into an upper room space where God himself meets you and speaks with you. Yes. We love you. We can't wait to see you. Tell everybody you know that God is going to meet you in your need because you're a worshiper first. We love you. We hope to see you this weekend at the Church of Champions, and we will be giving God praise together for everything He is. God bless you.